In the last video, we looked at how easy it was to replace an image in an album design using a Smart Object. In this video, we're going to look at some of the things you can and can't do in regards to filters. So first, I'm going to select the brush tool with this Smart Object layer selected here, and you'll notice immediately that I can't use it on top of the Smart Object. So when you have a Smart Object, you can't paint directly onto it. Also, if I were to select this and try to fill it with something, you see that I, can know I can't do that either. Fill is grayed out. If I were to press Alt Backspace to try to fill it with my foreground color, that wouldn't work either. Another thing you can't do, I'm going to press Control T to bring up the free transform. And then when I right click, you'll see that usually you have these plus distort and perspective. So distort and perspective are unavailable when it is when you have a smart object. So now let's look at some filters. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer and add some filters to this. I'm going to go up to filter and I'm going to add a blur. Well, before I do that, I'm going to control click to load this layer as a selection. Control click inside the image here, or the image thumbnail rather. So I just want to blur everything inside the selection. I'm going to choose a Gaussian Blur. Yeah, it's good right there. Now normally, Gaussian Blur is a one-time deal. Once you use it, that's it. It is a totally destructive filter. But since I have a smart object, it now becomes what's called a smart filter, which I could either turn off and hide, and if I double-click where it says Gaussian Blur here, I can open up the Gaussian Blur box again and re-edit it. And that's not all. By clicking this icon right here, I can actually adjust the blend mode and the opacity of just this filter. And at any time, I could hide or trash this layer here. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to control click this image icon here, or this image thumbnail. Maybe I'll add some noise this time. That's good enough. Well, now that's too much. So I'm going to double click that Add Noise in my Smart Filters here. I'll lessen it a little bit, and then maybe lower the opacity a little bit. And I can always lower the opacity of this entire layer right here. So you can start to see how flexible smart objects and especially smart filters are. And now let's look at one of the things we did in the previous video. This copy right here is essentially just another instance of this original smart object. So I want to replace this image. I'm going to go ahead and double click that, the image icon here, the thumbnail. It'll bring up this little box and hit OK, which will bring up the unedited original image here. And I've got this other image here that I'm going to drag on top of this smart object. I'm going to hold shift because it'll drag it in the same spot. And now you can see, I'll close this here, inside this smart object I now have two layers. And as soon as I press control S and save this, my graphic has updated with all of the same filters applied to this instance here. And in the next video, we're looking at doing some of these things, we'll look at doing some of these things with text.